Hi everyone, I'm Joyce Raimondo. I'm an author of the Art Explorer series, and I'm also an artist, and I'm coming to you from East Hampton, New York. Today we're gonna to do a video called Anyone Can Draw, and we're gonna focus on a technique called contour drawing. You can start and stop the video at any time. There's three different portions in the video. The first exercise is to draw a face, a friend or yourself, using a mirror, without any instruction at all. Then I'm going to give you approximately a 10 minute exercise to do a blind contour drawing, and that is drawing without looking at your paper. Then you're gonna do a sighted contour drawing where you draw looking at your paper, but focusing on the thing that you're drawing, which in this case is a face. And you will see how your final drawing has improved from the first one. So the purpose of the exercises today that we're going to do is to slow down and observe carefully. There are many, many different types of drawing. Some drawing, you do gesture drawing, you do it very quickly. Some drawing you might do from your imagination. You might even use a grid to draw. But today's drawing is called contour drawing, where you draw the edges of things, not the outline, but the edge and you draw careful observation. That is, we're trying to draw what we see. And the purpose of this exercise is to switch from the left side of the brain to the right side of the brain. Now, what do I mean by that? The left side of the brain is the analytical side. It's the part that likes to think in a linear way. It's the rational part of the brain. It's the part of the brain that names things. Oh, that's an eye, that's a nose, that's a mouth. The right side of the brain is the intuitive side of the brain. It's very concrete and in the present moment, seeing what you are actually looking at. So here's an example of a drawing that's done with stereotypical marks. It's simply naming things. An eye does not really look like that. A mouth does not really look like this. We might recognize it as an eye and a nose and a mouth, but those are actually symbols. It's not drawn, drawing what I actually saw. So today we're gonna slow down and shift from the left brain to the right brain. And I think this will all make sense after you do the exercises. So here's what you'll need. A pencil and paper. Uh, eraser and a sharpener and if you're drawing yourself of course you're going to need a mirror so let's get started we have a special guest today this is my sister Mary Barry so Mary is going to start off drawing a picture of herself of her face in a mirror with absolutely no instruction for approximately five minutes and that's what I would like you to do at home you can watch the video a while turn it off and then draw a picture of your face for about five minutes. Now, when was the last time you drew a picture of a face? Uh, it could be as long ago as 10 years. Okay, so I'm gonna prove to you how a person's drawing can improve in 20 minutes, okay? So, sounds good. Get started.
So Mary just made a drawing with no instruction and we're not going to critique the drawing now. At the end of the exercise, we're going to look at the first, second, and third drawing to compare and to see how Mary's drawing improved. I'm going to do a little demonstration now, and then you'll see my sister draw. And after the demonstration, you can turn off the video and do the drawing yourself. This drawing I'm about to do now, it's called a blind contour drawing. And it might seem strange to you, that I'm going to actually ask you to draw without looking at the paper. The reason for this is I want all of your focus to be on the thing you're drawing, which in this particular case is your face or a friend's face. So you're going to want to look at your drawing. You're going to wonder, well, I, you know, I want the placement and where am I going with this? And you're going to be blind. You're not going to be seeing your drawing. You're going to be looking at the, the object that you're drawing. The purpose of this is to slow down and practice careful observation and really study the object that you're drawing rather than shift your attention to the paper. And even when you're doing a sighted drawing and you are looking at the paper, your focal point should be on the thing that you are observing. Sometimes in order to avoid temptation, I will actually take another paper and cover my hand so there's no temptation to look at the painting, the paper. Obviously today for this video, we're not going to be able to do that. I am really focusing on my face as if I'm crawling around the edges and the contours. That's the focal point of this. Look at your friend, look at your mirror more than your paper. Now, when I'm doing this, of course, I'm not looking at my paper, so I might very easily lose my placement. But don't worry about that. This is not about an end product. This is an exercise. When you do this, don't lift your pencil. You're drawing the edges or the contours of your face. So now I'm sort of gonna go way up here and now draw the edge of my nose very slowly. And it's a little lighter at that point, so I'm not pressing as light. This is the edge of my nostril. And this is the bottom of my nose. I have absolutely no idea what this drawing looks like. I hope I'm not making a fool of myself. So here's the other nostril. And now I'm gonna come back around this way. And I am approaching my mouth. I'm going to stop talking. Don't worry if you lose your way. And I want you to do this very slowly over the course of 10 minutes. So now I'm going to find my edge of my face. My chin my cheek, jowl, my cheekbone, my hairline a little bit up there. I may have lost my way, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, I'm a little surprised. Hmm, okay, but I see I got the, the eye and the nose. But of course the placement is off because I had nothing to measure against. So now my sister is going to do the blind contour drawing so you can see how a beginner approaches this as well.
So let's see, how'd you do? Um, I think I did okay, first time. Um, and what did that feel like when you were drawing without looking at the page? Um, it felt like um, you were drawing something that you were seeing, but you didn't know really where your hand was at at the time. And it made you feel curious to want to look that you had to concentrate on really what you were seeing and just allow yourself to go with it. We're going to do a drawing which is called a partially sighted contour drawing. And keep the focus on the thing that you're looking at, which in this case is a face, but you can absolutely look at your paper to get placement and to find your way around the paper. You could also pick up your pencil. Once in a while, if you need an eraser, you can use that. But I want you to stay with a line drawing. So don't all of a sudden take your pencil and start shading. That's a different type of drawing. We're not doing shading. We're doing a contour drawing. Contour means drawing the edges of things, okay? And as I said, it's not an outline. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to demonstrate, and then Mary will do her third drawing. I am working, looking in the mirror, and this time I can look at my paper, uh, but as I said, my focal point is on what I'm drawing, and I'm also going very, very slowly. Sometimes when you do this type of drawing, it might not feel natural to go this slow, and that is part of the exercise. We're just not accustomed in the world that we live in today to really going slow. We tend to rush through things. And I want you to just really focus, same thing, as if you're crawling along the edge. It's as if you could actually touch it. And the temptation might be to all of a sudden just start looking at your paper but I still want you to spend most of your time, actually whether it's this drawing or any drawing, drawing what you're observing. Because every single time you look away, you're losing a connection with your subject. So now I'm kind of getting the placement of my nose here, going around my nostril. And now into my lips. This is a close up look. And it's also a very intimate look. It, it's a truthful kind of intimate look. And sometimes when we slow down, it does create more intimacy. What do I mean by that? It creates a closeness. I'm seeing some of the irregularities on my face here that maybe, honestly, I don't even really want to see, like a little wrinkle and that kind of thing. And I'm also getting to know myself, so that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? I'm seeing some of my imperfections, and that's good too. So there's a lot to learn from art, right? If you're drawing a partner, sometimes people, you might feel really vulnerable when you do this because it's, you know, you're really looking into someone's eyes and their being and whatnot. Now the hairline, don't just switch to a mode of, oh, draw, draw, draw hair. No, look as carefully at the hairline as you did at all the other parts. So I'm actually following along over here. I can see my forehead, there's a dark, dark, and then the hair sort of goes up this way. And this hair kind of overlaps this way. So I'm not just switching to a mode now of naming and just drawing random lines. I'm still very carefully drawing what I see. 
The temptation, of course, is when you get to the hair to just be very quick about it. So let's see how I did on my drawing here. I like the line quality. I think I captured something in myself, but we're going to discuss that later. So now Mary is going to draw. And are you ready for your partially sighted drawing? I am. Okay. And notice how Mary is drawing much slower than normally you would draw. Just feeling her way as if she's touching the edge of the form. A line drawing, contour.
What I'd like you to do when you finish your three drawings is take a look at them. So this critique, it's not a judgment of what's good and bad. What I'm more interested in is actually learning from your drawing, not judging it or evaluating it or anything like that. So this drawing, your last drawing that you did, when you were partially sighted, how did you feel doing this drawing? Um, I felt like I was ha concentrating on details a lot. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking of the whole face, I was just thinking of a detail. Okay, let's see if there's evidence of that in the picture. I see, for example, careful observation. If you do look at the eye, do you see how she got the tear duct and the exact shape of that eye? And the really the shape of the jawline. What does it really look like? Not your idea of what it looks like. Contour. I'm just curious, how did you feel with your blind contour drawing? I felt an uncertainty as to where it was being placed, mm -hmm. but I felt really confident that my hand was listening to what I was seeing. I was allowing myself to just concentrate on keeping my hand in the direction of what I was looking at, mm -hmm. regardless of the outcome. Yes, and that is a key factor when you make really good art. It is the ability to let one mark lead to the next and actually to trust, right? You're trusting the process. And you're letting go of, well, what if this doesn't come out to look like an eye? You're actually in the moment. Good job. Now, each of your drawings are beautiful, but I just want to do a little comparison here. So her first drawing is really, really beautiful, especially for someone who doesn't draw a lot. And it's really very expressive. But let's take a look at how this drawing um, actually improved to your third drawing. Okay, so the most obvious part that I see is the hairline. I did notice when you were drawing this, in the hairline you switched to the mode of, ah, hair. What does hair look like? You stopped concentrating and you went like, oh, you know, just draw lines, draw lines. After all, that's hair. That's what hair looks like. That's actually the left side of the brain. It names things and draws more of a stereotypical mark. Whereas look at the subtlety of this one. Look how beautiful the hairline is. Do you see that? It's actually really, really observed. And you were observing in this one, even though it might be a bit exaggerated, the way your hair is flatter on your head and comes very, very close to your scalp there. Do you see yourself any improvement from your first one to this one? I feel like my, the eyes are a big improvement. I feel like I, in the first drawing, I was just looking at a face and I said, oh, there's the eye and I made the shape of the eye. Where in my second drawing, it's actually the shape of the eye, including the part of your eyeball, like where there's white underneath it. Instead, I just drew a circle in there. Um, and then, I feel like that was way more exact. And even my lips, they, the way that the line that meets your lips is much more accurate. That this line actually touches the top of my lip. One thing that I feel really is exciting on the drawing where I wasn't looking at all, the eyes and the nose are almost exactly to what this is in terms mm -hmm. of the shape. That and that, that, that and that. They're actually the same shape, but I really wasn't looking. At the paper. Right. They're in the wrong places, but they're actually almost identical shapes. So you might say the blind drawing was actually in some ways more accurate than the one, your first one. I definitely think it is. 100% more accurate. Mm -hmm. You want to practice drawing. You can draw your hand. You can draw a pair of shoes. You could draw flowers. You could really draw any object using this contour drawing technique. Art really is about jumping into techniques and exercises that maybe get you out of your comfort zone a little bit.
and try them all. This is a typical drawing exercise that one would do when you're studying art in school. Um, I would recommend two books if you want more of these exercises. One is uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, and the other book is The Natural Way to Draw. So you can go to your local library and take those out.